Bioware is allegedly conducting an internal investigation to smoke out the sources that have leaked information to both Endymion and Smash JT. Roll this up over at fandompulse.com. You can find the link in the description below. I encourage you to go over there, become a subscriber, and become a paid subscriber and help support our journalism that will be unfettered by Google search as well as advertisers trying to put the pinch on us. Uh, we are fully supported by you, uh, so please come over and help support us. So, in a recent video upload, YouTuber Smash JT shared that a second source informed him that an internal investigation has been launched to determine his and Endymion's original sources that leaked Dragon Age of the Veil Guard's poor sales numbers. So, if you haven't seen this yet, covered it in multiple videos, though, I'm going to cover it again here. You can fast forward if you want to skip this part. But Endymion originally shared that a source informed him that the game had only sold 500,000 units. He said this, in total, what I'm told is that Veil Guard may have sold overall so far anyway in the 500,000 range which may sound good to some, but this is completely abysmal for a game of this level. Another source then affirmed this that information to Smash JT, who reported this. Dragon Age of Veilguard sales numbers are leaking out between Endymion and, Endymion and myself. I confirmed with the source that the numbers that Endymion had released are accurate, and holy crap, are they pathetically low for a very big, mass-produced, highly touted, praised to be a great classic adventure that people would love for the ages, has turned into what this stuff always does, woke slop that people sniffed out immediately. Later in his video, Smash said this, according to YouTuber Endymion, who cited his inside sources, the game had sold fewer than Star Wars Outlaws with reports indicating that only around 500,000 copies had sold so far. And after hearing that news from Endymion, I couldn't help but reach out to a source at Bioware to find out if that was true. And yes, according to them, this is confirmed. About 500,000 units have sold through and they have had plenty of returns too. Endymion claimed that they had sold at, had at least 30,000 returns. Uh, Smash indicating that that number was likely higher. So Smash did provide an update here over on X earlier this week. He wrote this, I've just been informed by my source at Bioware that they've been updated over the weekend and Dragon Age of Veilguard has now crossed over 1 million sales. While I personally still have my doubts to this number based on the surrounding circumstances, I wanted to pass along the info in the interest of disclosure to all. Um, I've already kind of talked about this. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that, can watch the previous video that I, I covered this on my uh, how about farming simulator humiliating Veilgar. Uh, that was a fun video. Uh, so now we have this new information from Smash. He says that quote there is an ongoing investigation to try to find who these leakers are, and he says this is actually coming from a second source that he now has within Bioware. And he added this: think about this for a second. Bioware instead of taking accountability realizing what they've done is wrong and trying to fix it moving forward have now tried to project their issues and try to find who these people are that are trying to call it out elsewhere because they're afraid for their job if it gets called out internally because they're not allowed to be critical of any of the decisions at this company if you work there so uh, he's right he's right instead of bioware trying to actually fix all of the problems that they have make sure that they do not happen uh, with Mass Effect coming up, instead, they're engaging in a witch hunt to try to stop people from knowing the truth about how poorly this game has performed. Uh, that is what they are prioritizing. And I think that says everything you need to know about this company and why it will continue to fail. Smash JT then shared details from this second source who said that well, what was happening at who explained what was happening at Bioware. He says, some employees called for rep retribution against the original whistleblower. That's right. Uh, they are calling for retribution. The employees there, clearly spiteful, clearly vengeful, clearly uh, want to take out their anger and hatred on the fact that they made an absolute garbage trash game that has been completely ridiculed and, and degraded, rightfully so, because it is trash. And uh, they want to take that anger out on other people, people that are exposing the truth. That is what they want to do. And that shows you their character as well, right? It's not about it's not about trying to make good games. It's about retribution for someone actually getting the truth out there. Uh, Smash then added, they're far more concerned with silencing any kind of whistleblower than actually addressing the issues within the company. 100% right there, kind of reiterating that. Uh, from, furthermore, the second source also provided uh, information about how toxic the culture at Bioware has become. Uh, Smash said this. He went on to highlight the broader issue of posit positive 
toxicity at Bioware where raising any kind of legitimate concern has now led to fear of backlash and being labeled as negative or harmful. Specifically, the source informed him uh, this. The underlying problem, as I see it, stems from the growing corporate greed and the increasing influence of these activist groups. Their views are being pushed onto everyone and dissent is often met with severe consequences. So we see this in a lot of other video game studios. They have these literal activist groups that are created based on identity. It's like Latinx, uh, queers for whatever. Poke the Pokemon company has it. Nintendo of America has this stuff. We see this at Activision. We see this at Ubisoft. They have all of these uh, employee resource groups that are literally uh, there to push identity politics within the company. And they clearly have in infected uh, the, the HR structure and gotten in, created DEI departments, and they are pushing all of this stuff in the gameplay, in the stories, etc. And it's all documented. It's all on their websites. I've covered this in multiple videos. You can go to Ubisoft's website. They make it very clear that they're putting this in their video games and their storytelling, etc. You can go to Microsoft's website. They literally have a, um, I don't know, what you, a, a map. <laughs> like a map where you literally ask it asks has you ask questions and you have to answer the questions on on what you're doing and how you're making the characters and designing the characters and the choices the characters have and how the characters interact with the other characters and it's all about pushing woke ideology in its various forms you can go to activision's website obviously a subsidiary of microsoft they have a whole like dei report explaining how they are introducing all of this degenerate a uh, sick, evil, twisted ideology into their video game. So it's all there. Uh, and clearly it is over at, at Bioware and EA as well, uh, according to this source. And it is a massive, massive problem that is destroying, destroying many of these AAA studios. Uh, flop after flop after flop, failure after failure after failure. We've seen it throughout this year. You can look at Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, $200 million impairment charge. Warner Brothers Discovery had to take on that. They have now revealed that they had to take a $100 million impairment charge on Multiversus. We know that uh, Unknown 9 Awakening, Bandai Namco, complete and utter failure. Uh, Dragon Age The Veil Guard, it looks like it is going to have massively underperformed its sales expectation and is likely uh, a loss, a major loser, even at 1 million units sold. It, that is not enough to pay for all of, the, all of the expenses that this game has incurred over the past 10 years that it's been in development. And then obviously you can look at Star Wars Outlaws, look at everything basically Ubisoft has released this year, uh, Skull and Bones, etc. Uh, Concord, another big one over at Sony. Huge, massive losses, and a lot. And what is the what is the factor that goes along with all of them? It is the promotion of woke ideology, whether that be in the character designs, whether that be insertion of that ideology into the actual game. Uh, you can look at the pronouns and stuff like that in in Concord. You look at all of the activism that's here in uh, Veilguard. Look at the feminist stuff that's in Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, it goes on and on and on. You see that in Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League as well. And gamers are sick of it. They've had enough of it. And they're closing their wallets. And they're not participating in these political lectures disguised as video games. They're not participating in these humiliation rituals disguised as video games. Uh, and uh, because gamers are no longer doing that, because there's actually still some good people within these companies, albeit it seems they are a minority, and they are trying to get the truth out, we have these witch hunts are now allegedly taking place to try and root these people out um, so they can cancel them. So cancel culture is still alive and well, uh, and it clearly is uh, going on at these AAA gaming studios and uh, obviously here at Bioware. Uh, it's sick, it's evil, it's disgusting. We're going to keep exposing this stuff. We're going to oppose this stuff, and uh, we are going to put a stop to it. Uh, but let me know what you guys make of this. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, especially to each other, and to always, always speak the truth.